Okay, so now we're going to go through another example. It says if 1,200 centimeters squared of material is available to make a box with a square base and an open top, find the largest possible volume of the box. Okay? So they tell us the area of the box. If 1,200 square centimeters of material. Now, let's go ahead and draw this box first. It says it has a square base. Now, I'm drawing a 3D figure here. I apologize if it looks a little funny. I'll do my best to draw it. All right, uh, there's my box, okay? It's best I can do. I'm not that good of a drawer. Well, anyways, it says we have a box with a open top. That means this part right here, there's nothing there. We have a bottom of the box, though. So then that, that's very important, whether it's a closed box or open box. It's going to um, uh, be a part of our calculation or not if this is open or closed, okay? Now, they tell us the area. Since this is a 3D figure, we're talking about the surface area. Now, let's go ahead and for, before we find the surface area, we got to label the we got to label the box. Now it has a square base. That means all four sides of this square at the bottom are the same. That means this side's x, this side's x, and then not only that, we've got some height to the box. I'll call it H. Now, if we're to find the surface area of the box, they told us the surface area is 1,200, what are the units? Uh, centimeters squared. They tell us the units, or the surface area is 1,200 centimeters squared. Let's go ahead and find the surface area of this box. To find the surface area of a, uh, of a 3D figure, you just find the area of all of its faces and then add them up. <coughs> Let's look at this bottom um, bottom face down here, okay? If I were to just draw this bottom piece, it'd have a length of x and a length of x. So the area for this bottom piece down here is equal to x squared. So for a surface area formula, oh, we already know what the surface area is, it's 1,200, is equal to x squared plus, now what we need to do is find the surface area of the four sides of the box. You've got the front face, you've got the face on the side, you've got the face in the back, and you've got the face on this side as well, okay? We already did the face at the bottom. That's where the x squared came from. Now, let me just go ahead and draw one of these faces because they're all going to be the same. The base is the same, so these distances are the same, and then the height's always the same. So I've got a height here, and I've got an x there. So if I were to find the area of each side of the box, the area is x, h for one side, plus xh for the other side, plus xh for the third side, plus xh for the fourth side. They're all like terms, or 4xh. So we've got our surface area is 4xh. Now, they tell us to minimize, sorry, where is it? Minimize, maximize, largest possible volume of the box. They're telling us to maximize the volume of the box. We gotta find out, based on these constraints, 
how big can this box be? Since they told us the volume, we need the volume formula of a, of a box. The volume here is equal to, it's the area of the base times the height. So x times x times h, or x squared h. So now we've got, we don't need our picture anymore. We read the problem, we drew a diagram, we introduced notation. From that notation, we came up with equations that expresses our scenario very nicely. Now you're gonna you're gonna notice um, something about these problems. Uh, a lot of them are very very similar. Now when it comes down to it, they are all are all the same. You're gonna take the derivative, set equal to zero to find the critical numbers, apply first or second derivative test. Every one of these problems is exactly like that. But what I mean is, they're all there's a pattern to them as. A lot of problems give you one equation, you have another equation, and if you recall in the previous problem, we had our um, cost function was a function of two variables. Look at our volume function, it's a function of two variables. We have to get rid of one of these variables in order to apply section 4.3 or 4.1. How do we get rid of one of these variables? Well, we go to our other equation that we have and use substitution exactly what we did in the last problem. So if I minus x squared minus x squared on both sides, I get 1200 minus x squared is equal to 4xh. And then I'm going to divide both sides by 4x. Divide that by 4x and divide that by 4x. I'm not going to put it all over 4x and leave it as one denominator because then when I take the derivative, I have to apply the, uh, the quotient rule. I don't want to do that. I want to do power rules. It makes it a little bit easier. So now I get h, or here, I'll, I'll write it uh, h over here. h is equal to, well, 1,200 divided by 4. Well, that's 300 divided by x minus x divided by x, or sorry, x squared divided by x is just x, and then it's over 4, divided by 4. I'm going to take this entire expression right here, since it's equal to h, I'm going to plug it in right there. So now v is equal to x squared times 300 over x minus, I'm going to write it as 1 fourth x. I can distribute this, and I get 300x, because x squared divided by x, subtract the powers, you're going to get 1, minus 1 fourth x cubed. x squared times x is x cubed. Okay? So now we have a function v of x. The volume is only a function of x, okay? I'm going to erase some stuff. Um, let's see. I want to... We don't need to know the surface area is 1,200 anymore. We already use that piece of information. I'm going to write h here because I think we got to solve for h because it asks for the dimensions of the box. Uh, oh, no, it just asks what is the largest possible volume of the box, okay? So we actually... Um, don't need h here. So let's see, I can get rid of this, get rid of this. I can actually get rid of all of it, except for my function, v of x. I'm going to leave that. 300x minus 1 fourth x cubed. So if I want to go ahead and find the, um, the value of x that allows me to make the largest uh, box possible, that is saying find the maximum of this function. This is the volume function. It's a function of x. Okay? This volume function may have minimums or maximums. The maximums would be the maximum volume. At the maximums, 
there are critical numbers, or in other words, the derivative is equal to zero. V prime of x is equal to, well, the derivative of 300, x is just 300, minus, put the power in front, 3 fourths, yeah, x squared. Now I'm going to take this, and I'm going to set it equal to zero. Now I'm just going to solve this equation. How I'm going to solve this equation is I don't like the fraction. I'm going to get rid of the fraction. I'm going to multiply everything by 4 over 3. 4 over 3, let's see, 300 divided by 3 is 100. 100 times 4 is 400 minus, so that's distributing it there. If I distribute 4 thirds to 3 fourths, they cancel x squared is equal to 0. Oh, I had to multiply this side by 4 thirds as well, but it doesn't matter. You get 0 anyways. This right here is a difference of squares problem. It factors very nicely. 20 minus x, 20 plus x equals 0. So if you notice, from this one, we get x is equal to 20. And here we get x is equal to negative 20. We're going to throw out the negative. We're talking about the, the bottom of the box, the length of the bottom of the box. Cannot be a negative length. We can't have a negative distance. So that means right here must be the, uh, the maximum. If I make x equal 20, this should give me the maximum volume depending on the height, okay? Now, we could find our height if x is equal to 20. We did have a formula for h. I did erase it, but it did not ask us the dimensions of the box. If it asks us what are the dimensions of the box, the dimensions would be 20 by 20. This was the base by whatever the h value is. These x's are not variables. These are like when you see, um, when you guys see dimensions for measuring something, like a two by four, two by four, like board, two inches by four inches, okay? So those are not variables here. But if they wanted the dimensions of the box, it'd be a 20 by 20. You plug 20 into your h formula, that would answer that question. But they didn't ask that question. I'm just mentioning it because they could ask that question. They're asking, what is the maximum volume? Well, that just means take your critical number and plug it into your volume formula, and that will give you the maximum volume. Now, before we go on, let's go ahead and make sure that this is a maximum um, value, OK? Let's make sure it is a local max. How can we do that? We can either apply the first or the second derivative test. I'm going to apply the second derivative test because taking the derivative of the derivative is very easy. It's just a power rule. V double prime of x is equal to, well, this just becomes negative 3 halves x. So if I find v double prime of 20 is equal to negative 3 halves times 20, which is negative 30. So the second derivative evaluated at my critical number is less than 0. If it's less than 0, I'm opening downward. I'm concave down. Therefore, at 20, this should be a maximum. So we indeed found the x value that gives us the maximum volume. This was just double checking, OK? Now that we know x is 20, we actually don't need all of this. They want us to find the maximum volume. x is equal to 20. Just find v of 20. Ooh. 
see, this is 6,000 uh, times 20 minus 0.25 times 20 uh, cubed. And this gives me 4,000 centimeters cubed. Okay. Right? 